Hello everyone, Golden Hawk here, creator of Ancient Powers and 24th Degree High Priestess of the House of Life. I'm on today to talk to you about Twin Flames, and I really expected a whole bunch of questions or comments, and uh, I they didn't they didn't come. Um, well, a few comments, but uh, I have personally experienced uh, several different twin flame situations, and um, I have found that uh, it's uh, usually not what it's purported to be through personal experience. Um, training on it is a really different story. And because of all the background I have with uh, different shamanic um, training and the different cultures, as well as the Egyptian twin energies, um, I've got... I carry, I've got a whole uh, lot of information that is really a lot different from most of what's out there. And uh, so many people really believe that the twin flame is attracted from the outside and comes in and that it's uh, romantic and love relationship and that's true on the romantic love relationship and about 25% of the time beyond that it's not also it's not usually attracted from outside of us but from an inside frequency piece that has to do with our growth and also where we're connected um, how we're connecting into the layers of 4D, and I'm not speaking probability field or outside of the probability field at this point. Um, if you're outside of the prob probability field, then you have pretty much got a good idea on on twin flame energies, and most of this stuff comes from inside the probability field. Um, we tend to attract photonically with the way photons work. There's like five different photons reacting when it's one, but it it's in five places in five different motions at the same time inside the field until it's observed. At the moment of observation, it's one and it single signals a twin energy. To come in and um, this twin energy this twin flame energy uh, does align to love it does align to fire which is um, creation energy actually and not necessarily aligned to external sexuality but can be internal sexuality um, most of the time twin flames that do come from the external brings lessons and being attracted in at a certain point for the level of growth that a person is at um, it's a very 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 high level energy love relationship everybody's in gamma you're not in beta and you know if you're not in beta you're not in necessarily in alpha you're like if you're in that lower consciousness you're like in deep dreamy awarenesses and uh, we stay it in this until we are pulled back to having to do the basic things inside of our daily lives and it starts getting in the way because of the way that we've been we've been programmed um, and what we experienced or witnessed especially what we've witnessed as, as young children 
um, because it just imprints. It, it it is imprinted and without without um, I heard it called biohacking now, which is interesting. But without it being actually deprogrammed and new programming lined up, we continue with uh, a lot of the stuff that our parents went through with these big spikes of, of lovely new romantic energies and uh, the twin flames uh, quite often cause a great deal of turmoil and really deep, deep spiritual and emotional sadness as we come to find out that most of the time one partner or the other chooses not to continue in growth come together when you're matching and are drawn back into your daily lives and you come back in, in your daily lives and you're having to deal with and the more you bring your lives together the more this twin energy um, dissipates it often brings uh, a lot of jealousy and control issues up especially in the male if he hasn't done work with reclamation um, from past lives and if he has then he'll usually continue growing and that's really awesome if we can actually move into that level of uh, twin flame situation other twin flames that we bring in are creative twin flames that we would not be able to write what we write play the music we play their inspiration and a lot of times with these partnerships they go on forever strange thing is sometimes those partners detest each other but can't work without the other one so and it's a it's a piece of opposition in energy and because inside the probability field we see opposition going to war or creating great struggle through this outside of the probability field it does does a piece that moves into a streaming effect and causes a, a very different energy but um, this is one of the twin flames uh, is the is the creative passion in that area we also bring in <laughs> um, quite often past life souls that we've had very very intense relationships with that we need to do the other side or the twin side of that energy work of the learning of the understanding and this is more probab more in the probability field uh, the true twin flaming the, the first major aspect of it is the opening up of the flame portals in the body and bringing our own masculine and feminine into a creative balance within self it's running the gold snake and the black snake in the kundalini um, until we're actually getting an energetic that I'm not going to talk too much about because it is very experiential but it does turn the kundalini energy into like a white gold um, masculine and feminine in the metallic and it shifts us into a different level of consciousness no matter what hurts we are running our, our brain at um, and that comes only after deprogramming and opening up and past that point we can move into the energetic for reprogramming and 
moving into the open free will uh, 40 field. And I know everybody wants to hear all kinds of, I'm really sorry, a lot of romantic stuff, but that's not the main thing that Twin Flames are about. I did do, um, not work, but um, some conversations with Amar Kuan Yin down, uh, down at Shasta uh, back in uh, 2006, I believe I was there, there was, and there was a big, huge gathering down there. Um, and that was the time that uh, we portaled into, <laughs> we portaled into Telos. And the, one of the main couples that started the twin flame, uh, big twin flame stuff and started uh, bringing a lot of information out about it. Uh, and I talked more than just a more, but uh, the female of the partnership in the original twin flame movement, twin flame information, twin flame education that was going out, she pushed every anger button, every crazy button, every denial button that he had. Um, he had not done the actual energy soul work. I get a lot of psychological stuff, but not the actual energy work, and energy is real. So it was still cellularly within the body, and it was, I guess, real horrendous to be living close to their home. Um, and uh, she was in danger quite a bit. He was extremely angry, consistently, like almost daily and would go into a lot of black hole energetics. He was dealing with a demonic that he was not willing to release. And I believe Shamise Daniels calls these false light connections or something. Um, because usually these connections or attachments are made with brilliant light. Although when they move inside of us, they turn the color, they turn into the color of the energy that they're withdrawing from us so they become invisible. These uh, attachments are not black. Black has to do with our own grounding and our own materialization. And so when bad magic is usually put on us, it's, uh, it's an intense white in energy because it's moving forward and piercing and and going within and in physics, that energy is white. And uh, so, of course, the Catholic Church says, you know, black magic is bad, white magic good, church do white magic. <laughs> and anything that people do without our permission, black magic, bad magic. And uh, he proceeded to kill like, you know, 9 million European uh, women and children and then came over here. Uh, you know, the, the, the Latins, the, the uh, Italians and Spanish, the conquistadors and uh, the church came over here and started killing, you know, half of California, big parts of Mexico, huge squaws all through the United States into Florida. Pretty bad, but that's their deal. Um, but all of this stuff is carried in cellular memory, is carried in ancestral memory, and it is triggered if the work hasn't been done when we come into a twin flame situation. So um, these great love affairs as we move into growth that so many people are calling twin flames, and I like I said, I've seen I've seen a lot of them, hundreds, and. Uh, I don't know that I've actually ever seen any that have worked out through the growth stages 
Abby, did you have you seen a twin flame twin flame relationship that's worked out without the the other pieces coming in and striking? Um, I see that you're out there. I was really uh, hoping to see some questions, but um, the the twin energy inside us. Bing! Here we are in Egypt. <laughs> We have the twin twinning of the female, dark and light, Oset, Neptet, or Isis and Neptus. And a little bitty Isis and Neptus are little, and Oset and Neptet are great big and really ancient and um, netters. But we get that energy of darkness and light in the feminine, and then we quarter it. And when it's quartered, it's worked with... Um, Horus and Set or Osiris and Set uh, as Horus energy is just starting to really be Heru or the Elder being uh, available. Heru twins, Osiris and Heru also twins Set. Um, and Heru is similar to what people are calling Christ consciousness now. And since Yeshua was taught in Egypt that's where the mother Mary took him I mean after he was born in Bethlehem and until he returned for testing at the age of 12 uh, yeah pretty sure he had the information but uh, working those feminine and masculine energies within ourselves when we bring those into a balance, a four-quartered balance that moves with the with the the stations of the towers of the earth, um, the properties works with the properties from the hypothalamus. Um, then we can, through photon field connection, call a twin in and. Those twins quite often will be same sex twins first, where we will be where we find a working balance where we can work our darkness, our light, all of that rainbow energy, um, all the different frequencies between the thought field, intent, focus, and manifestation, be able to run that, and then. The opposite sex will usually start coming in, and these are matching. Now, seeing very little of this, but I have seen a little of it, uh, when those partners get together, super fabulous, and um, I don't really want to say impressive, but... What a great information and auric field to be around these people when they do get into partnership. I have not seen it actually working full bore, we could say, um, until after the the um, Chiron piece, uh, 49 to 51. So we don't really come into energetic adulthood until we've gone through the major planetary phases uh, to go with the, the initial seven core chakras that are commonly worked with. But, um, and now I'm, I don't have Glenn. Yeah, there is for sure karma. There is for sure shadows. Hey, it's telling me when I get a new comment now. Oh, yeah. Well, Abby, you're uh, you're you're already working. Um, you're working the diamond field. You got a different situation because you are a thirty-three-six, and so I hope he's also in mastery. But he is doing the work. He is working on this. Um, it's, yeah, it looks inspiring. 
we all need to be challenged to a certain extent. And he's working the toning with the probably tongues. Do you work in tongues? Ah, Carrie. Uh, that that relationship is unless you get hit in the middle of the head with a brick by a well, brick a big old star, whatever, boom. Uh you're in a learning and growing relationship with the other person that you're in and it will allow you to do your own twin work and and it can be his choice to do that or not. Uh, once you start in with a great deal of growth, you're going to have some shifts, but hopefully they won't be too difficult. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, Abby, you're working with a sound healer, so um, you're working with you're working with a person who is doing the um, the ascension work and those energies and uh, clearing the tube and moving for growth. So very likely that the two of you will be able to do what is needed to do to create that in that type of relationship. So doing your own work, and if you know he's doing the the sound healing, I'm sure he's doing his own work. Uh, very likely, you can move that into the type of relationship that that you're looking for. Um, when someone's in mastery or beyond that in their own spiritual work. When you point out there's a piece that we need to look into uh, where I believe we need to grow, uh, people can usually come up with uh, ideas and move into resolution without uh, moving into knock down, drag out fights. Becoming the twin flame yourself is really what you want to do to experience the twin flame energy. And if you are with someone, as you say, um, he's already in that movement. So uh, if you have some doubts, speak with him. Uh, it's not impossible. We And we are totally in acceleration. Um, it's just that the expectations of most people who aren't necessarily sound healers um, and just they're not astrologers, they're maybe they read tarot or something and have some mystic stuff going on or whatever, but they're not active working on a regular basis on the energetics within the bodies, which sound healers do do, uh, the people who aren't dealing with that at that at that type of levels are the ones that are going to find the one partner in heavy resistance usually. Uh, so, and bouncing off, pushing triggers. We do need the growth that these people bring into our lives. We do need the information that these people bring into our lives. But most often, people who are looking for this type of relationship are – although, Kira, I haven't talked to you personally yet. I gotta catch up with some of these. Okay, Carrie, you came in late. No, this is not only for romantic relationships. 
And hopefully, if you're not at the level of growth that you see as a really great level of growth, and you have a great deal of healing to bring in, you don't want to bring in a romantic twin flame unless you want to go through all the lessons that teach us that that we need to be taught. It causes a great deal of growth really fast or causes us sometimes to sink. Um, Gina, if you're happy in your relationship, that's what you need. You've got growth in your relationship and and you're able to communicate, that's great. Uh, if you're specifically seeking a twin flame relationship, it's a different thing. And as I said earlier, uh, a lot of times, especially those of us who are working the Egyptian energetics, will have a twin flame come in that's not about romance, that we will get a creative partner or an energy a spiritual partner and a lot of times they will be the same sex because we're going to work our own energies and balance our energies as the sex that we are living in the, the body that we're in we'll do clearing on that and then we will bring in the polarizing twins for that and uh, it basically kind of four quarters and uh, and there's a lot of growth in that, but we have flame chambers inside the body that actually need to activate. And uh, there are masculine and feminine to those flames. And those are, those are very important. Being super honed within the self really needs to come first. And... Uh, And Abby, you've got another level coming, or four, or five, uh, before I think you're really going to be happy with the, the partner that you bring in so far as the growth goes. Uh, I look, I see patterns in different places and all the little like star points sparkling little star points um now that we've gone through this last blood moon and some of the major pieces when we get to where saturn's back into capricorn this january so many things are going to turn around so many things are going to come into the physical uh with changes Yeah, uh, Linda Marie, uh, that I was speaking to that earlier, how dangerous a great deal of the twin flame relationships are. And Gina, happy as two peas in a pod, well, you go. And, uh, you know, just work on making yourself uh, where you feel you're happy and where you feel that you belong. And uh, keep it going. Yes, we do. We attract people on the same level we're currently vibrating on. Or there is a piece where the we get a strike from outside because the frequency of our energy has been found. And um, that has to do with our energy actually being searched for and hunted out for thousands of years if you're a daughter of the sun if you're a son of the sun it may be your enemy who comes to sleep with you <coughs> just letting you know uh, because stopping the movement of freeing this field Abby, you're going to be going through four or five more levels of energy shifting and strengthening structure. That, that could happen in days at the rate that we're going. 
Yeah, no toxicity. Anyway, I love you all. And put questions in on this because this piece, I, I really expected I'd be answering a bunch of questions. And then I just realized, you know, I have no Glenn. But because he's he's not working with us right now from England. Cat Martinez is coming. She's not going to be on <laughs> your side. <laughs> The screen. Um, she's coming in next week. I am thrilled. Uh, her and I worked together for years and years. And uh, she's coming in to see if uh, she can take over what Glenn and what uh, Glenn had come in to do. And uh, that means classes will be coming out. Because he was doing the video and recording pieces, and so you're stuck with me with all of the mess that I am right now. Uh, love and light, and uh, I'll probably be seeing you in a day or two. Nefrika. And remember, self first. Self first. Ladies and gentlemen, not self-centered, centered in self. Remembering you can only change your own life. Heal. Become happy. Love yourself so you have it to give at its highest level.